Where, where is that stuff? The, the head and the camera? Camera's over there. The camera's over there. We're live from Alton, Illinois, uh, the Alton Museum of History and Art. Uh, this is a, a live show. We're, we're live right now, so no telling what's going to happen. But we're here today to, to talk about Robert Wadlow, Alton's gentle giant, uh, one, of the, one of the favorite characters of Alton, Illinois. Uh, we're going to talk to some experts about Robert Wadlow. We're going to go through the museum uh, and look at some artifacts. Um, I'm Nathan Woodside with the Alton Telegraph. I'm the managing editor. Uh, and I'm here with Gail Wallace of the Alton Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, can you kind of tell me why uh, Robert Wadlow uh, captures the, the attention of so many people here in Alton? Well, I think Robert Wadlow captures the fascination of people who lived here in Alton as well as people outside the area. We have a lot of visitors who come to Alton who are very interested in Robert. They know about Robert ahead of time. Many of them uh, have heard of him and many of them have not. But when they come in and to the visitor center and they uh, get some literature or we tell them about Robert when they come in, they're fascinated with this story. Uh, Robert was very well known in the area, very well liked, very popular man when he lived here. Um, and even now, 75 years after his death, we still have a lot of interest in, in Robert Wadlow from people. I had an email from a visitor last week that asked, uh, they wanted to come to Alton to see and learn about Robert, and they asked, did Robert have a special home built for him to accommodate his size and his height? And uh, so we responded that, uh, no, his home was not specially built for him. There were not as that many accommodations available for him at the time, but People have that fascination with him, and, and his character was, he was not only very known for his height and his, his size, but he was also known as a very caring, a very polite, a very gentleman type of a person. Mm -hmm. And everyone likes somebody that would be like that, it would be a good friend and someone that you would like to know. I'm sure, and for those not familiar with uh, Robert Wadlow, he at the time of his death, at the age of 22, he was 8 feet, 11 inches tall, uh, he weighed 491 pounds, so he's a big dude. Um, and, you know, if somebody comes to Alton uh, and wants to learn more about Robert Wallow and they drop by the CVB, what are some materials that, that you might have uh, for them? Oh, sure. Well, we, we have our visitor guide, which we do that every year, and Robert is mentioned in our visitor guide as one of our attractions. And uh, Robert plays a key role in, in attracting visitors and people to our area. And we also have what we call like a rack card which is an item that we have that gives a little bit of a story about him and that they can pick up and take with them at no cost. And we have maps in the office that we show them readily how to get to his um, his statue and how to come over here to the Alt Museum of History and Art and uh, be able to see the video about Robert, be able to see artifacts that he actually owned and used and the great collection of photos that they have. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you talking to me. Um, and another thing we're doing is, is uh, uh, viewers are able to ask questions. Uh, my boy, John, is behind the camera. So uh, if there's ever a time where, where we might pause, um, he's, it's because he's giving me a question from one of our viewers. Do we have one right now? Yes. Josh is asking how tall was he? Okay, Josh. Uh, Josh asked how tall Robert Wadlow was. And as you can see, this is a real life size. of, of This is actually how tall Robert Wadlow was. And, and like I said, you know, at the time of his death, he was 8 feet, 11.1 .1 inches tall. Uh, he was only 22 when he died, unfortunately, and, and he was still growing at that time. So there's, there's no telling how big he could have gotten. Um, we're here with a couple uh, gentlemen from the museum, um, Brian Combs, John Langley. Uh, they're going to kind of tell us about some of the things that the museum has to offer. Um, one artifact uh, that, that really caught my eye was a, a camera that, that Robert Wadlow uh, used. Can we, can we see that? Yeah, of course. John, if you want to get that. He was involved with the uh, photo club in, the, uh, in his high school. I think he was one of about seven members. And it can, it's kind of an interesting artifact. 
because it's an ordinary size camera. If you consider how large uh, Wadlow was at the time, it, it was rather difficult for him to uh, manipulate it. And kind of leads one to think about what he could have done creatively if he could have lived in a uh, more modern and more accommodating kind of time. They might have been able to get a larger camera for him. Who knows what he would have done photographically speaking or creatively. Do we have any, any photos or do we know of any photos that, they, that he had taken? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, they surely could exist somewhere, but uh, I have never seen them. So they might be in a collection somewhere, a, a picture that Robert Wadlow took that nobody knows. You know? Very truly. Yes, indeed. <laughs> what, were, uh, what were some other uh, hobbies that, that, that Robert had that um, that is evidenced by the artifacts here in this, this museum? I see there's a, a tennis racket, a, a sled. And a, can, can, can you tell me about something here? Well, the, uh, the Hawaiian guitar we've had for a number of years, he did play that. And, of course, a similar uh, – grain as the uh, uh, camera, his fingers were, of course, too big to play it uh, uh, accurately, so he had to essentially give up playing guitar as well. So he was a musician. He was a very creative individual for his young, uh, short age. Where, where do a lot of the, the artifacts in the museum uh, come from? Are they, are, were they just found, donated? Everything. Uh, everything was donated, every single aspect of it. That's something we're kind of proud of as a museum. The community saw fit to uh, to have these on display for uh the world at large, and we have done so for, for many, many years. Um, and, and what are the hours of the museum? When, when can people uh, come here and see? And what, what kind does the, the, the museum offer as far as, as these uh, exhibits? Uh, we're open every day except for Monday and Tuesday, uh, shortened hours on Sunday, of course, but generally uh, about five days a week we're here. And uh, obviously, I'm sure you get a lot of people coming in here. Uh, what, what are some of the things that, that the patrons uh, say or, 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 or possibly ask? Oh goodness, it's it's uh, extremely various. Um, some of the more more amusing are the the school children who come in here, and if they don't know his name, they often refer to him by his size, like the big shoe guy. And they're uh, great source of entertainment as for alternative names besides the Alton Giant or the Gentleman Giant. It looks like we have a viewer question. Uh, what? Mora is asking, did Robert live in Alton for his whole life? Uh, Mora is uh, asking if Robert lived in Wal and and Alton for his entire life, and the answer is yes, of course. And uh, the majority of it, I believe, he did uh, live in Rock Santa for a while. Yeah. And he went to Milton School. It, 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 what other schools did he go to? Milton School and uh, Horse Mann School. He also lived for a short period of time in Charleston, West Virginia, when his dad uh, first uh, got to work for Shell Oil. They transferred him to uh, Charleston. And Robert was there in the first uh, few years of his life, and then they moved back to actually to Grafton, Illinois, and then back to Alton uh, after being in Roxana for his kindergarten, which incidentally he was five foot tall when he entered, entered kindergarten. So at that time they knew that he was going to keep growing, I assume? Yeah, uh, at that time the, the doctors figured that he would be approximately eight feet tall. They didn't realize that he would make almost nine feet. Is there any record on how the family uh, felt about this? I mean, were they were they excited to see Robert grow, or, or what, were they, did they kind of were fearful? They were very worried about it. They uh, uh, took him to Barnes uh, Medical Hospital in St. Louis several times, and they found out that he had a pituitary gland that was overactive. Because of this overactive gland, uh, it kept him, him growing right till the time of his death. It, it never shut off a normal person. Your pituitary, much like your thyroid, will turn on and off at certain periods in your life and cause you to grow and have, quote, growth spurts. In Robert's case, it was just one growth spurt. And we, we were talking about this before the live cast started. Um, why why hasn't this happened again in the United States? And a lot of it is because, obviously, a, a doctor can see that coming at an early age and, and put a stop to it, right? I mean, right. do you think that, that we'll ever see another Robert Wadlow in in United States of America. Like I've always said, all records are made to be broken. I'm sure sometime somebody will probably grow taller than Robert, but it will be uh, an unusual circumstance probably that will cause it. Great. Um, is there anything else, Brian, at the museum that that, uh, that you think uh, would be of interest to, to, to viewers that you'd like to, to promote, promote, per se? Well, certainly since we passed an anniversary with the, the statue itself, the, uh, the small 28-inch maquettes down here that were done by the artist Ned Giberson, they're on display here at the museum, and uh, we have an interest uh, by a local artist in actually restoring those eventually sometime. But uh, they're pretty important because they show an evolution of the, uh, the creation of the statue, which everyone is 
kind of more or less, and that's their introduction to Wadlow in some regards. And of course, we'll be leaving here soon to go uh, check out the statue, um, but it looks like we have two questions. Erica asked, did he play basketball? Erica asked, did he play basketball? Um, I believe he did. I, I believe that he played for a short time. Is that, is that correct? He did as an amateur. Uh, they wanted to have him on the basketball squad at Alton High School. However, they couldn't get shoes the right size to fit him, and that combined with the fact they were afraid he might get injured, and they decided just to take him along as a, an exhibit with their basketball team. By the time they got shoes that would fit him adequately, the season was over. <laughs> Uh, next question. Is, uh, did Robert have any siblings? Uh, did Robert have any siblings? He sure did. Uh, who would like to talk about that? He did indeed. He had two brothers and two sisters, and he was the oldest of the bunch. And I like to say to a lot of people who visit here that uh, they were abnormally normal. Uh, there was no indication of a, a growth spurt besides uh, what they found in Robert. And uh, his uh, his brother uh, lived in Alton for quite a while. Um, uh, after his death, and, and he, he he's around just a few years ago, right? Right. He died in the year 2000. Uh, it's because of uh, Harold, his youngest brother, that we have the exhibits that we have here of Robert. For the most part, they were donated by Harold. Um, some of his family felt that they wanted to destroy some of Robert's artifacts in that they didn't want him remembered as a freak of nature. They wanted him remembered as the wonderful person that he was, which, of course, we do here. And his brother realized that and, and donated the, the artifacts that we have here. And Harold was his younger brother, quite a bit younger. And you'll see a lot of pictures uh, with Robert. And it kind of seemed like, like they were they were pretty close. Harold was uh, Robert's favorite brother, apparently. From what, all the accounts, they were together as much as they could possibly be. You see pictures quite often of Robert picking up Harold, carrying him around. Uh, eating a birthday cake with him or something of this nature. Got another question. Love to see the, the feedback. Does he have any kids? And if so, are they just this tall? Uh, no, he, he unfortunately did not live long enough to have any kids. He died at 22 years old. Um, and I guess it's time to go over to the museum. We're going to check to the statue. We're going to check out the statue um, and follow us. Uh, John, um, Robert went to Shirtliff College, the, the campus that we're on right now, correct? Correct. Uh, he went here for one uh, year. Because of the cold Illinois winters, he had to quit school here because of the slippery conditions and because of his extreme height. Oops. Because of his extreme height, they were worried about him getting injured here as he had many bones broke throughout his life as it was. And uh, they... He, Robert chose to go to the world of business and uh, went into business after one, one year here at uh, Shirtliff College. He worked for the International Shoe Company in St. Louis, which he traveled quite extensively. They would use Robert as an example of what kind of shoes they could make. And, of course, they would draw people in because of his extreme height, somewhat of a celebrity status. And that and the fact he also was really a nice person. He belonged to the church that I go to, Main Street Methodist Church. They needed a new organ. They did not have a pipe organ at the time, and Robert just literally went around and collected money until he was able to pay for that pipe organ. He was quite quite proud of that fact that he had helped pay for that pipe organ. And that organ is still in use today, correct? It's still in use today. Uh, they still have... Uh, many pictures of Robert at the church. Matter of fact, they have a life-size picture of him in the hallway when you enter the church in the entranceway. The main hall of the church is called Wadlow Hall. And uh, he he toured extensively on on these shoe tours, correct? I mean, and he met a lot of famous people, as as I as I believe. True. Uh, he was uh, ph photographed quite often in Hollywood with Hollywood movie stars. Wherever he went, he was uh, a celebrity, and, and of course had celebrity status. But the amazing thing about Robert, he never took advantage of that. He uh, was a very humble person, a very quiet, easygoing type of person, a person that anybody would find friendly and, and lovable. Sure, and that's kind of amazing because at such a young age, I mean, I imagine myself in that position, I'd be over at Duke's Bakery going, give me cookie smash, right? So right, it, exactly. it, it, it was not. <laughs> uh, the, the funny thing about Robert, the most amazing thing I think about him, was his attitude, even though he considered his height a disability. 
he just looked at it as a disability and tried to make the best of life anyway and, and did so. And, and it was often that people would, would come to the school and want to take pictures of him, and he was taking out of class every once in a while, and he would be willing to take their take pictures. Right. Exactly. He, he was more than welcome to take pictures with anyone. He would answer questions. Um, he wanted to help as many people as he could. He was very, very interested in helping people. That was his major goal in life. Well, one of his aspirations was to be an attorney, correct? He wanted to be an attorney originally when he started Shirtliff College. That was his original aspiration. It never happened because, of, like I said, the cold Illinois winters caused him to leave school, and he went into the world of business. Well, thank you, John. It was great talking to you. Great talking yeah. to you. Uh, now we're here with uh, Nancy Alexander. She's a local historian. We're here at the statue. Um, she's got a lot of fascinating things to say about Robert Wadlow, and she's got some good plans that to do with Robert Wadlow. Hi, Nancy. How you doing? To see you on this beautiful late spring day. Welcome to the wonderful statue of Robert Pershing Wadlow. He, he, okay. Oh, we have a question. Uh, okay. Did Robert wear shoes from the Brown Shoe Company? Did Robert wear shoes from the Brown Shoe Company? Yes. Yes. He has shoes were made from various companies um, from when he was younger on to when he was he got to, uh, well, the height he got to before he passed away because he was still growing and his feet were still growing. And then they had to be modified to allow for the braces that he wore on his um, on his ankle. And now not only do we have the life size statue of Robert here, we also have a, a chair that, uh, that, that, that was used by him. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and what's wonderful is there is a um, description of the chair right there for people to to read and to understand how it came into being and how important it was for his comfort because he hurt so badly from being so tall and the and the pressure on his um on his joints and then after he passed away it was donated to the Franklin Lodge which where he was a member and then um, it's still there and it remains on display but then they allowed a copy of it to be brought up here. And so the children and adults can have the picture taken in it all the time, in which they do. Now, Nancy, we're coming up on an, an important day at Robert's uh, 100th birthday, and you've got some plans. Uh, can you kind of talk about yes, those plans? I was just talking to Marianne about that. I am so excited. I'm the head of the committee for the Waddle Celebration of 2018, which celebrates and commemorates the 100th anniversary of Robert's birth. And what we are going to do, it's going to be a year-long celebration. It's going to be called the Year of the Giant. And it's going to begin in summer of 2017 with a concert down at the riverfront at the amphitheater. Then we plan on having a um, reunion of the Wadlow family. We're also going to invite people who knew him because they're getting few and far behind, few and far between, excuse me. And also other people have stories of Robert. So that we can um, take, uh, we will be taking, um, recording these memories and putting them in archival storage at the library so they'll be safe and other people have, can have access to them. After that, we, it comes his birthday in February and we plan on having a huge birthday celebration with a birthday cake and music and singing and it will be a joyous time, I hope. At that time also, we have been in, um, negotiations with Meredith Elliott, who owns the Milton School, where Robert went, attended elementary school in Milton. And we, we're going to have, um, have um, shuttle buses coming between the place where we have the party and to, and to the school so people can go back and forth and take tours. We also want to... Let's see. We also will have, hold on a second, we're really requesting a stamp to be released in his honor. And we're in the process of, uh, process of getting that going. There will soon be a Facebook page up and running. And on that Facebook page, we'll, have, we'll keep current what, what events are being planned and what's going on about the celebration. And also there will be a place on there for people to, um, to sign up and to express an interest to become a part of our celebration and to donate their time so the community as a whole can take part in this. And please watch for any future events. We also have Senator Hayne, who's going to make a proclamation in Robert's honor um, on his birthday at the state legislature. And we also have Mayor um, Brent Walker, who's going to proclaim 
Robert Wadlow Day that day. There'll be other things that'll be coming up. We're really excited about it. We're just in the baby stages now, but it'll come, it'll get bigger. Uh, sounds fantastic. Uh, now, tell me a little bit about the statue. How did it come to be, um, and, and what was it like when, when this was built and commissioned? Back in the 1980s, there was um, a problem here in Alton. We were, had just lost the glassworks. It had closed. We also were having problem with, problems with um, Shell Refinery and um, the other refineries in Wood River, Amico. They were cutting back. And then the, even the Cleed Steel and the steel mill in Granite City were laying off people. Um, over thousands of jobs had been lost in the area. It was really a, a tough time to be here and uh, living here at Alton. And so um, we had, at that time, a man named Steve Tassinari was playing with his child one day and was showing him how tall Robert was by putting a yardstick up on top of his head. And the idea came to him that there needed to be a permanent mo monument to Robert. There needed to be a marker where people could go and he could be an inspiration. And through this, to help rebuild the spirit of our community. He felt... So a state commission was formed, and they met weekly on Fridays down at the telegraph office. It's live. <laughs> For three years. And during this time, um, Steve Cowsley, who was the publisher of the Telegraph at that time, played a vital role in the success of the commission. He was not only the host, but he was, but he also helped to unify the members of the commission and the members of the community through the editorials of the paper. Throughout the process, Tassinari's goal was to preserve the memory of Robert Waddle. Robert was a gentle, strong-willed man who daily had to overcome his great disability. But you can't remember him just for his size. You have to remember him for his giant spirit, for his kind demeanor, and for his gentleness, and his sense of humor, because he did have a great sense of humor. Initially, the commissioner had to raise $10,000 to even begin looking for an artist to create the statue. And they did this through the great efforts of the Alton Godfrey Rotary Club and through the um, various optimist clubs in the area. And then they, their, goal, their goal at that time was not very high, but after the community began to take part and, other, and more money started coming in, they soon had raised $50,000. And then their goal was $53,450. Then they had decided where in the world they were going to put the statue. And so various offers came from all over the city. But the one they chose was here. And how perfect was it here, where he can greet visitors coming into our beautiful city daily. Even while I was just sitting here, I counted 20 people just this morning who have come here to visit the statue. When he was little... People would stop and stare at him. And his mother, as all mothers, she was extremely protective of her precious baby boy. And he would say, he would turn around, he'd go, Mom, they don't mean any harm. They're just looking. Let them be. And so now he can he love people, and now he can be here. Nancy, we have a question. Just to compare what you happen to know who is and how tall is the second tallest person who ever lived. The second tallest person. No, I don't. I know that during his lifetime, there were various men who came even into Alton. He was confronted down on Broadway by a wrestler who was a monstrous man and who was short, or turned out to be shorter than he is, who wanted to fight Robert right down on Broadway. And, of course, Robert just kind of looked at him and gently walked away because <laughs> that was not his thing. But, yes, um, there, were, there were a lot of people who were coming up, and they constantly, you know, he was having to see how he measures up. I do not know today who is who's the second toss, but that's one of the considerations for our Waddle celebration, to see if we can find out who it is and to bring that person in. Really? One second. John Rogan was the second tallest man. Um, I don't know much about the man. I just recently learned that he was the second tallest in history, but I know very little about the man. I'll have to do some research on that. What's all of you? 
I don't know how. You don't know? He was well over eight feet. But, uh, I, I, I suspect about eight feet, six inches from the sound of things. The final cost of the statue was $73,000 to get it the way it looks now. Alton Alt native Ned Giberson was the artist who was chosen to create the statue. And one of the most wonderful parts of the story about Mr. Giberson's creation of it is the fact that he left his, his studio open one day a week. And anyone could come in that day. And they would come in and look around, see what he was doing, make comments. And then a lot of them would pull up a chair or two and sit and talk with him for hours, sharing their memories of Robert and their stories that had been passed down to him. And we're, we're right here in Robert's neighborhood, right? He lived here. This is this, this has been just he a random spot. Here. He went to school there. He lived back there. I mean, this was his hood, right? Well, he didn't. He didn't live here on campus. Um, he did live over on Brown Street, which is just not very far from here. He would take the bus. Many people talked about seeing Robert in Upper Alton. I'm um, getting off the bus and carefully because <laughs> his feet did not work on the steps very well. And then, but he would take the bus and come here. And then he still had trouble navigating the steps, especially when winter came, because he was developing arthritis and his feet would slip. Looks like we have another question from Veer. Uh, John Rogan was eight foot eight inches tall to the guy who asked him. Oh, okay. Thank you. John Rogan was eight feet eight inches tall. Thank you to a viewer for uh, looking that up for us. How far are you in up there? Oh. There we go. I am. Uh, I'm uh, about six three. And as you can see, I barely come up to his stomach. So that gives you an idea of just how large this dude was. Just incredible. He goes into a lot of these older houses, have huge ceilings, ceilings that go forever, and he's bumping his head. He's, he's crouching over just to get through. A lamp. And, it, yeah, lamps. Yeah. Look at this house over on Brown Street. The door is so small. The other day we were driving by, and my husband goes, how in the world did he get in there? How did he get in there and get out? But he did, and he used to sell his lemonade out there in the front yard to people. And um, I can remember Helen Akers telling the story about seeing this grown man in a wagon and pushing it along. And she went, who in the world is that? And went out there to fuss at that person, and then she realized it was a boy. Nancy, I, I want to ask you, so we only have a couple minutes left, and I, I really love hearing you talk about this, but, you know, unfortunately, Robert died at a young age. Um, can you kind of tell us a uh, uh, a shortened version of that wonderful long story. Well, he had gone up north to Michigan to go to a um, summer festival of the forest up there. And as he was walking through it, he, he noticed that he just wasn't feeling well. Of course, he had no feeling in his legs and his feet. And so he went back, and, he, and his father realized he was feverish. But they, So they set him back in the car. Now, this is the middle of summer. You know, we we're talking 90 degrees. And as he was sitting there getting sicker and sicker, they couldn't move the car because the crowds were so large. He had to just sit there until the crowds dissipated. They took him back to his hotel room because um, the beds at the hospital would not accommodate him. And that's where they, he laid. They called the doctor, and he laid there for several days um, with 106 temperature going in and out of consciousness. One of the, I think the last thing he said was, I won't be able to go to the um, celebration. And he was speaking about his grandparents' um, celebration that they were supposed to go to for his, their wedding anniversary. Family meant everything to Robert. And the, the funeral was, was, was huge and all. And everybody showed up. It was day and night, people coming through. Um, and we, we don't have two minutes left. So if anybody has any questions, uh, now's the time to get them in. Yeah, I'm getting kind of tired. Uh, we got two minutes left. We've been here doing this for 28 minutes. I think I need to sit down. You need so. To go <laughs> uh, so this is the chair, the especially made for Robert Wadlow. Uh, and six three, I weigh about 190 pounds, and I feel like a child. <laughs> so this is just one of the things that uh, that you can see if you come here to Alton, a wonderful museum. It is. It, it's a it's a diamond. You, you definitely need to come here and check out the Alton History Museum, um, and walk over here, uh, check out the statue, check out this chair. Yeah, sit in it, get your picture taken, uh, and put it up on Facebook and get all the likes in the world. Um, we have one minute left. Uh, 
And uh, I, I got to say that I've only been in Alton for two and a half years, and the story of Robert Wadlow has just completely captured me. Uh, I can't imagine just a better story, a better American story. Uh, and it's, it's really fascinating. Uh, Robert, his life, his personality, uh, all of all of uh, the events during his life, uh, it's definitely something that everybody needs to learn about. I highly recommend it. Um, and... <laughs> live TV, so I'm, I'm uh, waiting for the seconds to tick off, trying to find something to say. This is live TV, and I'm suddenly realizing why I went to print journalism instead of broadcasting. <laughs> Visit Alton.com. That is something that I forgot to plug. Enjoy Illinois. We're out.